Hey, what's up, gang? This is Jeremy coming live from my shop slash sanctuary slash arcade uh, to talk to you a little bit about what I've been up to uh, while sheltering in place. And I've been up to quite a lot. Uh, this, this video is gonna have a little bit of a pinball theme to it because as some of you might know, I'm a little obsessed with the game of pinball. I own three of them at home. I have operated them. I um, have collected them for a decade now and fixed them up and sold them. Um, it's a hobby, also an obsession. Over here we have an old project of mine called Airfield, which was uh, the ability to take an old play field, hang it on the wall, and then have it run the actual attract mode insert sequence, because this is important. Right? <laughs> um, but today, um, I, I'm gonna talk to you about a few projects that I've been working on, and then we'll end on a pinball one, and maybe even by the very end of this video, we can all do a little bit of good, okay? So, um, one project that I worked on recently is actually uh, not pinball, but video related. I touched the game frame code for the first time in eons to add a feature that I wanted to add for a long time, a Pong clock. Now, some of you probably are aware of the concept, but for those who aren't, a Pong clock is a clock where the, the score of the Pong game being played is the time. So every time the left player scores, the hour advances. Every time the right player scores, the minute advances. And, and I've always loved this concept, and um, I spent a couple days adding it to the game frame, and I probably spent another couple days just mesmerized by it. I love this feature. And I'll put it on GitHub if you happen to have a game frame and a uh, Wi-Fi adapter, it'll, it'll, it's great. I highly recommend it. Um, what else? Uh, my daughter and I have been building Lego. I've never really been a big Lego person, but we have this treehouse kit that I got for Christmas. It was a Lego ideas kit. And we've been doing one bag a day. So it's taken us about a month to finish it. We're gonna finish it tonight. And I really recommend this, like not only the kit, but the approach. If you have a, you know, some kids or you, you, know, you have someone to build Lego with, you don't need to sit down and do it in a day or two, despite what I've learned doing Lego with friends at Tested. Now, you can actually just build it over the course of a month and it's fantastic. You visit it every day and little by little you get this thing building up. It's almost like a time lapse. Um, and then, oh, what else? Oh, I fixed my RC car, which is something that's been sitting there for eight years since I broke it. And then I discovered my neighbor's rooftop. <laughs> awesome RC track. Uh, it's fantastic. It's just a gravel-filled rooftop, and I took it over there, raced it around out my back door, and you know, brought it back in. Uh, you know, maybe it's actually a business, so I hopefully I'm not causing too much of a disturbance. I should probably do it only after business hours. Um, but the big thing I wanted to talk about is an update to PinSim. So I just did this this past week. The PinSim, as some of you may know, most of you probably don't, is a interface for VR pinball games that I built when the Oculus Rift came out. Um, and the original PinSim, uh, which has been, you know, it's open source, you can, the plans have been released long ago, the, several people have built it. Um, it is basically, you know, the first eight inches of a pinball game. It's at the right height, it uses real pinball leg hardware and all, everything's correct. Um, and you put on a VR headset and it kind of creates the illusion of standing at the game that you're playing. Um, well, the problem is it, it, it required, you know, being able to be a carpenter essentially and cut three quarter inch plywood. Uh, and what I wanted to do was make something that I could make and other people could make using a laser cutter. I happen to have a glow forge. Um, so I built this. I call it the PinSim Mini. And it's the top portion of the PinSim, as you could imagine. Um, it basically, uh, all of the same components are inside of it. Uh, so you have real pinball hardware. If I can lean this back. Uh, you have real pinball plunger. You have real pinball flipper hardware. Um, and the, the plunger uses the IR distance sensor. So as you pull the plunger up, uh, the infrared sensor senses where it is, and that connects to the right analog stick. It uses the same pin sim controller as the main one. Um, and wherever I needed three quarter inch plywood, I just uh, made spacers for it. And it, it worked out great. The spacers actually ended up being perfect to mount other things onto. Um, and it, the designs, I'm very happy with it. Um, it's, the only problem is that it's still 250 bucks, you know? Um, and 
I know a lot of people would like to have a like you know a little pinball interface, but it's not worth that level of investment. Um, so even though this does lower the price point a little bit, um, if you just want the flippers and you don't need the plunger, there's cheaper ways to do it. And that's why, hey, why not? I made the mini pin sim mini as well. Um, so if you just want the flipper buttons and you don't need all of the extra stuff, uh, you don't need like tilt sense accelerometer stuff and you don't need the analog plunger, um, this little guy actually uses two thirds the amount of plywood and it just uses an off the shelf you know, controller kit that you can pick up on Amazon for, for 20 or $30. Um, it comes with its own, you know, USB encoder. It doesn't use the pin sim stuff that I designed, but it works fine. And this whole thing all in, you can build this for $40, even including the wood, which by the way, I discovered uh, that I, I had been buying plywood to laser cut that has, you know, the adhesive paper on it, but I discovered you can buy much less expensive wood that's perfectly good and just put, that doesn't come with that paper and just apply your own. I wish, I, you know, everybody who's into laser cutting is like, well, duh, but I, I, this is news to me. So I bought this, uh, you know, one foot wide uh, roll of uh, masking tape and uh, it's like a hundred feet long and you know, you take a minute to apply it to your piece of wood uh, before you cut it and it comes out great and you don't get any of the burn marks. Um, that you would otherwise get from like these prototypes that I made, you know, all these like nasty burns. If you cut without the protective sheet on, uh, it just, it looks horrible. And you don't, you don't want to wash that off. So the pin sim mini and the mini pin sim mini, uh, if you want to build one, all of the files will be up on Thingiverse. If you have a laser cutter, you can download the files and cut yourself one. All of the code for the pin sim controller is up on GitHub and we'll have links to all of this in the show notes beneath this video, of course. Uh, it, but if you just wanna buy one, uh, maybe you don't have a laser cutter or you don't have the time, uh, you can buy one because each of these will be up on eBay and all of the money made from the sale of each of these will be going to charity. Uh, we'll give it to Feeding America to help some people who could really use the assistance right now. So please, please buy one and let's see what we can do. Okay, uh, that's, that's it for me. Uh, that's all my updates for now. Um, Please let me know what you guys are up to. We love hearing from you, whether it's in the tested discord or in the YouTube comments. Um, what are you doing with, with your newfound uh, sheltering in place time? Um, let us know, uh, we'd love to know. And but other than that, stay safe guys. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. From all of us at tested, see you later, bye.